Welcome back to Baseline Car Channel. I know you guys probably won't recognize me, but still your boy Vitaly. I know I haven't posted a video for a long time, and it's due to the fact that, you know, as you guys could probably see, I'm in a new background. We built a house recently and I had to move, so I couldn't work on my cars. But I finally had some breather to do, so I was able to, you know, construct a video for you guys of a target roof repair. And um, you guys remember how I repaired this roof right here right there in the background. It looks flawless right now, it looks really good and clean. Um, but what it took to repair this roof, because you guys remember, this roof fell off in the middle of a freeway due to the fact that I forgot to lock the latches after the paint job and just flew off by the, by the wind. So I had to go pick it up and it was all scratched up. I'll try to put some shots over here on the side of you guys to see what, what it looked like before. what it is now I mean check this thing out right now it looks really nice and flawless it, the car itself looks really dirty because it's been moved and stuff but the roof itself looks really really nice I also did this piece in the middle of the trim just to um, kind of make the whole roof black type of thing but as you guys can see it looks really nice and clean let me show you from the inside it looks, you see, you can see the tree details, I mean, not a single scratch to what it was before and what it is now. It looks really nice and clean. I did paint these sides on the side, just like I had them before. I had to paint them to a body color just to make it look, the whole arch thing look, you know, sequential and the same. But uh, this is what we got, so let me show you guys where I started and where I ended. So as far as tools, this is what you're going to need. This is the biggest tool you're probably going to need is a DA. I use this thing very, very often. If you don't have an air one, you can get the electrical one, but you do need this one because if, by doing it by hand, I mean, your hands will fall off, really. This thing took a lot of sandpaper and a lot of uh, sanding, really. It took a lot of like hours, I would say hours, hours. Uh, for whatever you're gonna use as a sanding tool, you're gonna need these sandpapers. And I'm talking about you're gonna need a whole pack of these. Actually, a few packs of these. I think I used maybe like uh, 300, 30, 40 maybe pieces, or at least at least 30 pieces of sandpaper for that roof. This sandpaper goes quick, goes by quickly. Why it wears out? Because it's a, it's a plastic glass. But I think I used 180, 320, and then 600. And I think the rest of it was just the wet sand, pretty much. But you're gonna need a lot of like 180 and 320 if you ever get into this kind of situation. So here's what we got so far. I was trying to do 400 grit. It did not go really well for me. It was just taking forever. So I tried 320. And that, even that, would not get this plastic glass, whatever. It was really difficult. So I had to go 180. And after 180, I did 320 and then 400. So this is what, after 400, it looks like. 
what I'm gonna try to do right now is trying to do wet sand 400 and see if I can get any clarity out of it I could see a light going through it this you see this is good I mean this is a uh, non scuffed or non sanded versus this sanded I'm gonna try to do wet 400 and see if I can get any clarity out of it and then maybe 800 and so on and so forth Doing 400 grit wet sand, basically tell the difference. So basically, when it's trying, when it's drying up, you can barely tell. Let me put some water on it, show you guys. See right here. So you could see a light to it. It's a dull light, but you can still see it through it. See, this is done. This, this is not sanded. This is sanded can't see what's behind it but you could see the light through it so what I'm gonna do is probably go higher grid and see if that clears up a little bit all right so here's what we got I did 800 and I did 1500 grit and you guys could see you could see pretty clearly to it you could probably tell um, the paint on the floor or dirt or whatever on the floor you see how you could see a um, texture on the floor you could somewhat tell over here already especially when I wet it which is good because if you start buffing not as clear as I want it to but pretty clear so what I'm gonna do right now is do 2000 and maybe 2500 wet sand and see if that gets any clearer and then after that I'm gonna try to buff as far as this side I haven't touched it just wanted to experiment on this side and if it all goes successful and good then I'll do the same thing on this side. Alright, so here's what we got. This is what it looks like when it's all dried up. I did 2000 and 2500. I'm not sure what these scratches are. Maybe some deep scratches that I haven't got rid of. So I have to take care of those. But I mean, maybe I'll just try to buff over them and see what how they respond to, to the buffing machine. But if you actually wet the surface, you could actually see floor pretty clearly. Not as bright as this, but I'm gonna try to do a buffing, a little bit of buffing and see what it's gonna do. These, these scratches are, you know, removed to the minimum and you it's all dull because it's not buffed. Let me try to buff it and see how well we can get it. So check this out. After lightly buffing it, Let's take a look. This is non-sanded area. This is sanded area. A little bit dull, but still good. And as I said, this is lightly buffing. Even on the outside, you can see this is non-sanded area. It's all smooth. On this area, you can still see some scratches. So the lesson to be learned, learned is that I need to go over probably 400 just to make sure. And then 800, really, really, really good. And after that, I need to do 1,000, 1,200, really consistent. Make sure I don't miss any scratches because it seems like I missed some scratches over here. And they are pretty deep. So, um, but as you guys could see, if you look over here, barely much of a difference. Well, there is a difference, but you could see even the packaging. You could probably read the packaging right there. See, look into it. So not too bad. This is actually really great results. I'm not going to keep buffing this area. I'm just going to redo everything. Kind of correct all these deeper scratches on it to make sure it's all smooth all around. Because you could see over here there's not as many of them. Well, there is. There is. That means I did a poor job or skipped a step somewhere. I'll get rid of all these scratches. But uh, what I'm going to do is check this area again. Then I move on to this area and do a lot more, get a lot more details out of it. 
do a lot more precise job just to, to eliminate having these kind of fuzzy fuzzy scratches area all around all right so basically here's the update after buffing this thing and making it clear and all this i had to go over and fix a few scratches that i have missed and i went with 180 also did these get rid of all this paint on the side smooth everything out same thing on this side i cleared up all the scratches that i could see and um the side side paint just to make sure when i put new paint i don't have any blemishes or anything like that and what i'm gonna do now is you know as usual a previous time i'm gonna go lower lower uh, grit uh, sandpaper basically i did 180 i'll do 320 and then 400 uh da and then maybe 400 wet sand and then 500 wet sand 600 wet sand so on and so forth until i get to the good you know uh good glossy finish Here's where we got did uh, 180 everywhere and then 320 with the DA right now what I want to do is go over everything with 400 wet sand and see if I can get rid of the scratches and make sure everything is good if that works well then I'll work to 500 <laughs> So here's the status on the roof, it's all taped up, really nice and pretty. I went with a reducer or thinner to clean up these edges from any debris or anything like that. So first stage first, and I'm not going to record this because the camera and uh, the paint don't get along really well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just spray with the base coat first, and then uh, mid coat, and then after that once it dries up, I'll pull this thing off the middle section and just clear it all and see how it's gonna come out should come out really good let's see how it does I'll show you guys after I'm done so here we go final product the roof is done and complete painted on the sides you guys see how good the edge looks and all that so it's pretty much good to go Alright guys, so that would be it for this video. 
as you guys can see in the background it looks great the roof came out really great I took a challenge to repair this roof it was probably not worth it I could have bought this new one you know I just painted the sides but I knew if I had to paint I might as well just get this thing done I took a challenge and I got it good I mean it came out pretty good great actually so I'm very happy with the results that was able to save money and you know re you know restore this roof from what it is if somebody has the same case where they scratch their roof this is the way to do it this is the way you repair it that's the way I created the video and also we have a bad news as you guys could see in the background the Corvette is all taken apart kind of looks cool looks like a Jaguar from behind has a hole in everything kind of looks cool but anyways this thing is all taken apart we had a little incident so um, it's all taken apart it's being painted right now and so on and so forth I'll try to include all a little bit of details in the next video and also in the next video I will try to eventually I know after a few months of you know promising you guys that I'll reveal the project I will try to reveal the new project it's it's been hibernated for a long time I know it's been like a few months it's just because I haven't been able to get to it. It's a very exciting project. I'm really excited to get started on it. I, yeah, I'm sorry guys, I couldn't get started any earlier. It's just been, you know, it's been sitting on the shelf. But I think like the time has came and you know, next video I'm probably gonna reveal the project to you guys. It's gonna be a really exciting and mysterious build for what it is and probably must my most powerful build as I've mentioned it before. So we'll see what it what it does, you know, we'll see what it takes, you know, to get that thing restored. But, I mean, it's pretty exciting. I'm very happy. So stay tuned for the next video. Like, comment, subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys on the next one.